Hey, Mike. You know, pre-scouting is for a menu is a good thing, except mm. you got to do it on the day that you go into the restaurant because you could your mind could be someplace totally different right. on Tuesday than it is on Friday when you're going to the place. Yes, that's how I. That's why I'm a spur of the moment right. kind of person. But I understand. But like Mayo, I'm planting seeds. I, I understand that. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, address, if you will, this speculation that Patrice Bergeron is skating, not skating with the kids. But legit skating, uh, his explanation is that he uh, wants to stay in shape for the alumni games that he's, that he's going to play. Uh, do you buy that explanation, or is he perhaps I don't. Thinking- I don't know what to make of it. I've heard it, um, but it seems to me that you don't really need to be going up and down the ice at full bore when you're trying to play with the alumni. I've mm-hmm. seen some of those games. Yeah. They're pedestrian at best. Yeah. And so... You know, I, I listen, they, they've done such a good job of staying near the top of the pack. They're only a point off the best record in the National Hockey League. It would be enticing if you were just freshly into your retirement to consider coming back if you thought maybe you could make a difference in a Stanley Cup run. And it's, it's pretty much wide open right now. And, mm-hmm. Mike, one of the things that I look at, it what, it, this allows them to maybe – and the Red Sox do it all the time, is acquire somebody at, during the trade deadline without having to give anything up. We talk about, you know, one of those goalies. So it's almost like you're acquiring this potential centerman and you don't have to give anything yeah. up, and he's going to come in, he's going to be able to contribute right away. Yeah, absolutely. And and if really, you know, I was I looked at the Globe this morning and they gave a report card. I had already had my report card made out here. I mean, it's... They're ninth in goals for, which isn't really impressive. The rest of the stuff is their fifth or sixth tops in the league, and that's a pretty good place to be. Um, but they need some complementary offense. They're not complementary. They need some some more juice in their offensive game, and Bergeron could give them that and, and then some. And then if they would do me the big favor of trading Allmark and get another winger, they'd be in great shape. Um, for Patrice Bergeron, because you guys both played – uh, at the professional level, what do you think the major consideration is when if 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 he is deciding about making a return? You know, you, you um, when when I retired for a while and I actually retired and came back, I watched the game closely, and I'm sure he's watching the game closely. So your mind never loses it, but the the quickness of the game takes some time to get back. You you really you know you need to take some some serious physical steps but also mental steps and sort of ease your way back into the game but i mean he hasn't been out that long and he looks like he's as slim as he's always been it looks like he he he, and if the desire is there he could get it back in three four weeks i don't think that's going to be too much of a problem wow i would love it well remember he did he's not one of those guys that it was about speed for him so he could be a guy that can play a heady game. I think that's why Yager was able to play for so long because it really wasn't about speed. You hear in certain sports, a guy loses his speed. He's, he's just that much smarter. His advantage yeah. is smarts. Yeah, and that and that's game like, smarts. And that I think is what makes. And then he get the itch where you look at it and go, I could still compete at a high level. Yeah, and I think the enticement really is the fact that there's this dangling thought that maybe. Maybe they could make another run at a Stanley Cup here. That was so disappointing last year. Maybe we could, we could overcome that sort of sourness and and make a a good little push to get to the Stanley Cup. And there's nothing to say that uh, they can't do that. I mean, this is a wide open conference. Still have to get through Florida at some point, but um, and I'm worried about their. I don't know. I guess it's not really lack of. It's yeah. It's the lack of physical play. I wonder how they're going to st- stand up to that. That's a big concern for me. But Bergeron stands up to everything, so putting him back in the in the lineup would be an obvious plus. You mentioned your report card, Mike. Uh, where did you grade them when it comes to closing out in overtime and and the struggles they've had with that? Is that a concern for you? It is. It speaks to uh, a couple of things. Um, if you watch the uh, the game in Vegas. But Postenok took a nap, three on three. You can't do that. I gave him a gate. I gave him a, an A minus because, and it should be an A because he's so prolific. But if you don't pay attention to the other side of the puck, 
if you're getting a little bit lazy and a little too often, you're going to be you're going to be a liability when it comes to playoff time. And Postonok, he can't do that. But closing out is a is a bit of a problem for him, and it speaks to the lack of you know scoring throughout the lineup. But you know they've lost one game in regulation in their last ten. So even though they haven't closed out, they've still managed to get a point and keep themselves in pretty good position. Mike, a big part of that for you has been Swayman, and, and you've talked about the confidence building there. It seems like it's only gotten better since the last time we talked to you last week. But with Bussy getting sent back down to the Providence Bruins, it seems like Linus Allmark's going to be making a, a comeback. Do you see that impacting Swayman at all and, and his his trend upward? Everybody that I've talked to, and, and I've only met him a couple of times very briefly, he just seems to be on such an even keel. I don't think Allmark's return is going to bother him going to bother me more than it's going to bother Swayman because I want to see him play more often. I mean, I consider him one of the top, certainly one of the top five goaltenders in the league and could very well be considered the top goaltender in the league. There are a couple other guys out there, Hellebuck from from uh, Winnipeg and Talbot right now having an incredible year in Los Angeles and Thatcher Demko in Vancouver, but Swayman's right in the mix there for, for a Vezina tro trophy as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Mike, so the Bruins here have four home games uh, coming up before they hit the All-Star break, and then they get seven straight home games coming out of the All-Star break. I feel like that overtime win in St. Louis might have uh, given them a little bit of energy, a little bit of life, and I kind of expect them to go on a nice little run here and really try and grab that almost like number one overall spot in all of hockey. Do you see anything like that kind of formulating right now? I, I don't know why they, they can't make a good run. You make a good point. Their schedule is favorable. They need a couple things to happen. They need Lindholm to wake up from his semi-coma to his play for most of the first half of the year. You don't see him nearly as much as, as you did last year. Carlo and Forbert looks like they're on the verge of coming back, so that's going to be a, a big difference. I've been really enjoying the way Waterspoon has played, but, you know, it's funny – if uh, all these guys come back, he has to go through waivers, and I'd hate to see them lose that because he's a pretty. He looks like he's been a pretty good pickup as a depth player. But f as far as a, the run is concerned, it's a great time, and, and they're going to have some time. They haven't had any practice time whatsoever, really, to speak of. And when you're home like that without traveling, you get a couple of good workouts, and it makes a big difference. By the way, uh, Mike Scheim doesn't want Bergeron back because he puts last year's loss on him. I don't put the entire. Yes, you did. Loss you did him. earlier. No, I just I just wanted to point out the fact that he came back and then they lost three straight. It was just <laughs> it just happened to correlate. I'm not saying that he was the reason. It just happened to line up that way. Have some coffee, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I, I think if the Bruins are smart, they use this time with Omak to kind of you know just showcase him because I don't know if you saw the the kind of the the. The uh, Swayman and he talked about his arbitration and kind of how he felt. Um, uh, you know, he he felt like disrespected a little bit on some of the things he had to hear. I think it's a time for the Bruins to highlight Omak and move on and say, Swayman, this is your team. You're the goalie of the future. You're the guy that we believe in, rather than yo yo and two guys and one guy feeling like. He's being disrespected and Swayman on the, the treatment that he's getting. I, I saw the comments from Swayman. He walked it back mm -hmm. a couple days later, but, you know, he, he's right. It's a really tough thing. Someday I'll talk about the arbitration we had with Lyndon Byers once. It was vicious. I mean, it's it's not a good feeling to go in there and talk about your player. Or the one we had with Raymond Bork, where you're, t you're talking about one of the greatest defensemen of all time and you have to criticize him. So it leaves a bit of a scar, but... I think he can get through it. The question for me is, ultimately, are they going to be able to afford both of these goaltenders? Allmark is not going to take a pay cut when he comes to the table a year from now. And Swayman, now feeling the pinch of arbitration and looking like he's going to get, certainly going to get votes for the Vezina Trophy, is going to look for a substantial raise. And eventually, you're going to put too many eggs in the goaltending basket and leave yourself short in, in financial terms in different areas. So... Eventually, they're going to have to come to a conclusion on this, and they don't seem to be in any hurry, and I don't think they should be, but I've already made up my mind. Mike Bilbury, thank you as always, and we will talk to you again next week.